In this video I'm going to show you how to set up a static and sliding bung rig and what the benefits are for both. What is up guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Rhys, you know the drill. We make fly fishing videos and tutorials that will help you catch more fish. So if this is your first time here and you'd like to learn more, please press the red subscribe button and smash that bell so that you don't miss out on future videos. Bungs or sight indicators. If you've never heard of them before, they are basically a fly or an accessory that will allow you to present any of your flies at any depth for an extended period of time. Now I've done a whole video on bung fishing already, which I'll share with you at the end of this video, but one of the questions I've had nigh on every week since making that video is actually, how do you set up a bung rig? So the guys over at Free or Fly have kindly sent us down some bungs to work with, so I'll show you how this works. Sliding bungs will give you the most flexibility when you're out on a day's fishing and they're normally my go-to if I'm ever fishing a new venue that I'm not really sure of. So think of it like this, you're at a new fishery and you've spoken to the fishery manager and he's told you that the average depth of the lake is about 15 feet. So you're on your first spot when you're fishing and you know it's about 15 foot deep at the most but you're not sure where the fish are sitting. So if you set up with a sliding bung, and let's say for example, you've got a cat bug underneath it. You start at three foot and you fish at three foot for the first 12 minutes. After 12 minutes, you then increase it to six foot. And then after a further 12 minutes, you increase it to nine foot, 12 foot, 15 foot. So within that period of let's say, what is that? That's three, six, nine, 12, 15, five 12 minute intervals, which is an hour you've covered the whole depth from that peg using the bung. Now you would only be able to do that quickly and efficiently with a sliding bung. And that's a perfect example of why it can be more effective than let's say a static bung. Because within that first hour, you will have found where the fish are at. And then using that knowledge, you can adopt that to your other methods. So when you then put the bung rod down and pick up a lure rod, well, if you know already that the fish are between six and seven feet, you know that when you cast up your fast intermediate, the first cast, you should be counting it down at least 30 or 40 seconds, or alternatively, changing to a heavier sinking line. Now, if you started with lures, for example, you'd have had to gradually work your way through the water columns to find that. But the beauty of a sliding bung is that it's already worked that out for you within the first hour. One of the other benefits to a sliding bung as well is that it offers you the greatest control and sensitivity toward the fly compared to every other bung that there is. And for beginners it's perfect as well because if there's no hook on the bung, you're less likely to get tangles or problems with your casting. So for your bungs, they come in three different sizes. You've got small, medium and large and they come in a variety of different colours. So in front of me here I've got a orange and yellow, a pink and yellow and a black and yellow. So in terms of looking at colours, I've got two basic rules. If it's overcast conditions, you fish bright, so you fish your orange and pinks and yellows. If it's sunny, you want something with a silhouette, which is why I would switch to the black and yellow. In terms of picking the right size, this will largely come down to you and what you need. If you've got bad eyesight, you're going to want to fish the big ones. If your eyesight is great, but you want the more sensitivity you can get, you want to fish smaller. On a 3 mil tungsten blob or a, an egg or a mitt or a squirmy, I prefer the small bung. It offers you the right balance, basically, between seeing the bung and getting the sensitivity that you need. The medium ones I would look at if you're fishing with a fair bit of wind, and then the big ones then are if you're chucking a massive line or it is very, very windy. So, in terms of how you rig these up, let's have a quick look. For a sliding bung rig, I've gone for eight pound fluorocarbon leader. The leader length is gonna be about 10 feet. This is the pink and yellow, and they will come set up with two wires so you've got one spare pack of wires with beige stoppers on so these beige stoppers are used just to reinforce either side of the bung if you need it and then you've got one wire with the bungs on and a black stopper so before you attach anything on measure out your leader and do not attach it to the fly line I'll explain why now you're going to pull up your bung and then it's going to have at the top a small circle where you can run your leader through. So you're gonna run your leader through there, pull it out at the desired length that you want, and then you're gonna push through the bung and the black stopper that comes with it. So just give those a good push through now. And once you pull them through a bit, 
work out of the two parts you have here of leader, which side is the shorter. Pull that through just like this. And there you go. So you've got the bung in the middle there. Now at this point, you need to decide on what color you want facing you when you're fishing. This is precisely why we haven't attached the leader to the fly line yet. So most people will say, I want the yellow side to face me. So you're gonna pull the bung and the black stopper all the way down until you reach the point where you've got what you wanted, which was two and a half feet. What you would then do is you would attach this side to your fly line and attach this side to your fly. So for, for example, I will put on a cat bug for this tutorial. And then there you go. So the fly is on, the bung is suspended just a little bit up from it there and you're good to start fishing. Okay, so static bungs are less flexible than a sliding bung, but don't let that put you off because there is one key thing a static bung can offer you that a sliding bung can't, and that's an opportunity at a fish. So for you do a range of different colors of static bungs. You've got fluorescent yellow, fluorescent yellow with a touch of black, fluorescent yellow with a touch of orange, bright orange, and then the glow in the dark white bung. This thing is bright, believe me. So why are we having a conversation about static bungs? Well, static bungs are mandatory in any sort of competition fishing that you enter into. So to make these competition legal, you need to make one slight amendment, and any comp legal fly in the FIP swoosh must be made up of three materials. So what most anglers will do is that they'll just touch on a piece of thread and a piece of dubbing or glister, anything just to meet the rules of FIPS moosh. So should you fish a static bung over a sliding bung? My opinion, yes you should. Why? I'll give you an example. On this year's trial for whales, I was fishing a watsit under a bung. Now the fish took the watsit and whilst I was playing that fish, this bung was flying around under the water following the fish. A second fish took this bung under the water and I landed both fish. And the end result of that morning session meant that I came first having nine fish over the person who came second having eight fish. Now, if I hadn't fished a static bung, I wouldn't have come first. I would have probably come second or equal on points with the other angler. But because I fished a static bung, it gave me that extra one fish. And that's what it comes down to in competition fishing. It is all about the smallest of details. So how do you set this up? Okay, so similar cast again. I've got 10 feet of eight pound fluorocarbon leader. And I'm gonna start my bung at, let's say, three feet. So three feet is just past my shoulder. So all I'm gonna do then is take a small diameter of leader. The leader at the moment is probably about five to six inches long. And I'm just going to attach it with a three turn standard dropper knot. And then once that's on properly, cut off the remaining end, and then you're left with this piece. So at the moment, this piece is probably about five, maybe six inches. I'm now gonna drop it down to about three and a half. The reason for that is, I want that bung as close to the main line as it can be. The longer your dropper leader is, the longer it's going to take for that bung to move when the fish takes the point fly. So we'll just attach the bung as a dropper via a simple double Davy knot. And then there you go. So as you can see, there's probably about two and a half inches, I would say there of leader. And then you're gonna come down to your point and you're just going to attach your fly again. So for example, I'm gonna go back to the cat bug, put that on, Fire a double Davy knot, and then you're good to go. So the static bungs all come in one size. This size itself will hold up two, three mil beads easy. And in terms of colors, the same rules apply. So that is how you set up a static and sliding bung rig. A big thank you to the guys over at Free of Fly for sending us down these bungs. I'll leave a link to their website in the description below. You can head over there. They do a range of different barbless flies and bungs and also hooks. And just as a thank you, there is 10 bungs here that I'm willing to give away for free. So what I'd like to do is give away two batches of five bungs to someone at random. All you need to do is leave a comment in the comment section about what you would do with these bungs, and we'll have a look at them and see who comes up with the best comment. So guys, my name is Reese. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, and I will see you in the next video.